I believe in miracles because I believe in God. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ernest Angley Hour. Well, today we have another classic for you, taking you back to 1979, Reverend Angley's crusade in Baltimore, Maryland. Also, at the end of this program, you will hear a great testimony of a woman who received her sight the previous year, and she's back in this crusade to give her testimony. You will be greatly blessed. But first, we have two songs coming up. with us. His power's all around. God is with us. His angels have gone down. So reach up in faith, believing the Holy Spirit is moving. God is with us. And He is here. He is here for reason to live and not to die to tell the world about Jesus we must win souls but when my work on earth is done when God calls to take me home I'm going to heaven to live forever more I'm going to heaven someday I'm gonna leave this house of clay I'm gonna leave this world behind, heaven's glory will be mine. I'll see 
Jesus face to face forever in his loving grace. I will never be alone. I'm going our home beyond the sun they stood tall till till the work was done done. then god called them home a brother or sister mom or dad husband or wife or dearest friend they'll all be waiting on heaven's shore when we go home yes i'm going to heaven someday i'm gonna leave this house of clay i'm gonna leave this world behind heaven's glory will be mine i'll see jesus face to face forever in his loving grace i will never be alone i'm going home i'm going to heaven someday someday. i'm gonna leave this house of clay i'm gonna leave this world behind I hope you were blessed by those two songs. Now, taking you into that crusade service from 1979 in Baltimore, Maryland. And the message is, where will you spend eternity? Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you from the Civic Center in Baltimore, Maryland, the Ernest Angley Miracle Crusade. (laughs) Praise you the Lord. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thousands of people have gathered for this great service today here in the Baltimore, Maryland Civic Center. And buses are here from, it's hard to tell, how many states. And people from here are here today from across America. And we are glad that you're in this great miracle service. We welcome you. Take armfuls on purpose because the Lord has much to give you. What would you give in exchange for your soul? Jesus asked this profound question when he was here on earth. You will find his question in Mark's Gospel, the eighth chapter, beginning with verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What would you give to buy your soul back from a devil's hell? What would you give? Well, it's something to think about. Well, you say, preacher, I don't believe in hell. Well, I got big news for you. That doesn't do away with it. It's still there, just as big and hot as ever. So that doesn't do away with it. Isn't it strange that some people, uh, they believe in heaven, but they don't believe in hell. They believe that heaven's a real place, but they don't believe hell's a real place. Well, the same book that says that heaven's a real place says hell's a real place. And we have to talk about both. And then some people will say, well, I don't believe God will send anybody to hell. Your sins will send you there. And your sins have separated you and your God. Haven't you read that in the Bible? Your sins have come between you and God. And God gave man everything when he first created him. And 
you can read in the Word of God the action that God took when man sinned. He didn't wait for man to live in sin a year or two or three. You're living under grace. That's the reason that God hasn't sent you to hell already. That's right, you're under grace. Because we've all in the past sinned against God, but a lot of us have come out of it and left it behind and been made new creatures in Christ Jesus. Of course, some people, they don't believe you can be free from sin. They have never come out of it. They have never left it behind, and they still sin. But they, the devil has deceived them, and they think they're going to heaven, but they haven't made it yet. And I don't think heaven's in view to them, really. No, because sin cannot get in. And they'll say, well, the Bible says we have all sinned. Sure, we have in the past, but that doesn't mean we're all doing it now. I'm not. I'm going to heaven. Praise ye the Lord, and I've left sin behind. I quit my sinning, and I've become a righteous person for the Lord. If the Bible teaches anything, it teaches holiness of life and heart and a clean, pure heart. And the Bible said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And you can't be pure in heart and be unclean at the same time. And so blessed are the pure in heart because, because those are the people that's going to see God. Well, you say, but I don't believe that hell is a hot place. Well, the rich man decided it was. When Jesus was here on earth, he told the story, and if anybody knew of somebody going to hell, it was certainly Jesus. And he said there was a certain rich man, and he died, and in hell uh, he lift up his eyes. And the Bible tells us he was tormented in the flame. So there has to be a flame in hell. I know a lot of preachers have tried to do away with the flame, but they're sorry. Preaching cannot put the flame out in hell. No, sir. The Bible says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, let God be true and every man a liar. That's putting it out straight, isn't it? Tell you, when God says something, he puts it on the line. And he doesn't back down and he doesn't compromise. And when Jesus told us about hell, he meant for us to believe that, it's, that it really exists, that it's really there. And the psalmist said, the wicked shall be turned into hell and everybody that forgets God, all nations that forget God. That's something to think about, isn't it? The wicked, the wicked, the sinful shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Now, hell's a terrible place. It has a flame in it. And it isn't a place of you just remembering and being away from God and so forth. No, it's not a state of mind, if some preachers would have you to believe. It's a real place. It has a flame. The rich man wanted water. He wanted Lazarus just to dip his finger in water and said, cool my tongue because I'm tormented. If you're going to believe part of the Bible, why don't you believe it all? And if you're not going to believe any of it, why don't you just shut up and lay it aside and forget it? Because it isn't going to do you any good unless you're going to believe it all. And when you talk about miracles, some people, they declare the days of miracles are over. They've taken so much out of the Word of God. If I were to tear out everything that they don't believe in, I wouldn't have anything left but the lids and I'd have to, the covers, and I'd have to take Holy Bible off of that because they still don't believe it's holy. They don't believe that God spoke it, but I believe God spoke it all, and I believe it's up today. I believe it's for you and me today, and I act on it, and I believe that God will do exactly what He said He would do. And so that's the reason I pray for the sick. And they get healed too, don't they? Yes, they do. And a lot of you, you've already gotten your miracle. And you know that it's real. And you know that God has done it. And there's a newspaper woman here today. And when I was in Baltimore last time, she brought her blind mother to receive her sight. Her mother was legally blind. And she brought her to the platform. And God gloriously saved the reporter gave her a born-again experience, slayed her in the spirit, and while she was slain, while the reporter was slain in the spirit, her mother received her sight. And a lot of you witnessed that. And isn't that beautiful? And the, that reporter is here today. You're going to meet her at the close of this message, and you're going to meet that mother that got her sight. And she's going to tell you 
how exciting it was when she received her sight and the many things she had planned to do when she got her sight and what happened to her after leaving this service. It's a beautiful story, believe me. Why? Because this Bible is true. The Lord said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall get well. These signs shall follow believers. Oh, hallelujah. And so the Lord's Bible is true. And the Lord is confirming His Word today. So you that are out in sin, you that are lost on your road to a devil's hell, it's time for you to take stock of your life. It's time for you to stop dead in your tracks and say, where am I going? Where am I headed? The Bible tells us a soul that sinneth it shall die. And you stop quickly and think, where am I headed for? Where would I go? And there won't be a second chance after death. No matter what anybody tells you, this book does not tell of a second chance. Oh, no. Jesus, when he was here, denied the fact that there would ever be a second chance. And there will be no chance for you to escape. Once you are in that awful place that I'm preaching about today, you will be there forever for all time and eternity. And that's something to think about, isn't it? I know many people cannot believe it, but that's the trouble with mankind down through the ages. He hasn't believed God's Word. That's what happened in the Garden of Eden. Man wouldn't believe. There are millions of souls in hell today because they didn't believe. Oh, I know a lot of them. The preacher preached them into heaven, but that doesn't mean they got there. No preacher can preach anybody into heaven. Now, he may deceive you, and he may tell you, oh, I know this was a good fella, but if he wasn't righteous, if he wasn't born again, he went to hell. And we have to face this. Jesus declared, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. This Bible teaches that you must be a new creature in Christ Jesus to live in God's heaven. And the unholy, the unrighteous, and anything that's unclean cannot go through the gates of glory. Isn't that what the Bible tells us? So you have to clean up. You have to be washed in the blood that stained the old rugged cross. Isn't this good news? Uh, aren't you glad that I came to tell you this good news today? You that are lost and you that's already saved, I know you're glad that I have come to tell the rest of them about it. Because when you find the old rugged cross and your blood washed and you're made a new creature in Christ Jesus, uh, you're so happy about it and you feel so pure and clean, you want everybody to know about it. It's a sad day. A very sad day when you see so many people that they don't know where they are going. You stop them and say, are you born again? They say, I don't know. Well, they're not, or they would know, of course. Uh, but it's sad that they don't know. And they have been taught that you can't know. They have been taught that you won't know that you're saved until the end of the journey. Now, that's a poor time to be knowing. That's a terrible time to be knowing when you can't do anything about it. I know now, on my way to heaven, praise God. And as the song says, I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm so glad. Yes, I believe in hell. I believe that God has an arm of judgment just like he has an arm of love. And this Bible, if this Bible teaches anything, it teaches judgment. Read the judgments of God in the past for mankind. Read of the judgments of God in Noah, the judgment of God in Noah's day. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought that God would have drowned all of those people? Children, babies, mothers, daddies, brothers and sisters. But he did do it, didn't he? He said he would. Why? Because of their ungodly lives, because of the way that they were living. God cannot stand to be around people that go the way of Satan and walk hand in hand with Lucifer. And those people were walking hand in hand with Lucifer and doing uh, all the works of the flesh and enjoying them. They had shut God out, the God that had made them. Have you shut God out? Have you shut God out of your business, out of your life, out of your home? Have you shut God out? One day you will need Him. 
One day death will catch up with you. One day death will overtake you. Uh, and oh soul, where will you go? Oh soul, where will you spend eternity? You're here for such a short while. The devil's deceiving so many people today, making them think they have such a long time to live. And the devil's telling you, you have plenty of time. You're going to change your way. You're not going to die in the condition you're in. And then suddenly maybe there's a crash on the highway. Your life snuffed out and in eternity you go without a chance to pray. Or maybe you lie down and you go to sleep and you never wake up until you wake up in eternity and you wake up lost. My Lord and my God, the cry of the damned. If hell could be uncovered today and you could hear the screams and the cries of those that's tormented, I wouldn't get a chance to finish this message in the midst of this thousands of people that's gathered here today. You would be rushing for this altar prayer, screaming, what must I do to be saved? I want Jesus. I want Jesus. Today is your day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the time for you to make the decision. Not tonight, not next year, but now, right now. Give your heart to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm coming home. I'm tired of sin. I want heaven to be mine one day. But I want to die lost. I want to be saved. And if you'll cry out to the Lord today, the Lord will forgive you. The Lord will set you free. And you'll go away from this service happy, happy, happy. And it will be the happiest day of your life thus far, I assure you. What would you give? How much would you pay? Oh, yes. What would you give to just save one hand or two hands? Well, how much money would you give to save two eyes or to save your tongue? What would you give to save two feet? You would give everything, wouldn't you? Absolutely everything. But what would you give in exchange for your soul? What would you pay? The soul is the real you, not the hands, not the feet, not this outer house of clay. It's of the earth, and it's going back to the earth. It's the house you live in, and it's going back to the earth. But the real you lives on the inside of that house of clay called the soul, and that's the part that's eternal. That's the part that can never die. The soul of man, the soul of woman came from the breath of God, and it cannot be satisfied only by the things that come from God. The body came from the earth, and it can be satisfied with beans and potatoes and so forth uh, because it is a part of the earth, but the soul cannot be satisfied with the material things of this life. It's something that comes from God that satisfies the soul of man. Some of you have been trying to satisfy your soul uh, on the material things of life, uh, but it won't work. You haven't found happiness. Uh, you're seeking happiness, but you can't find it uh, because you won't come to Jesus, and he is the one with the happiness. He's the only one uh, that can give you joy and peace today. Why don't you come home? He is calling. Don't you hear the call of the Lord today? calling you as an individual, calling you with great love, calling you to come home. Why don't you come home? What would you give in exchange for your soul if you were dying now? What would you give for a few more minutes, a few more moments to make things right with God? What would you give to get your soul right, your soul damned in hell, you hear the voice of the Lord saying, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Depart. Cast you into hell, a hell prepared for the devil and his angels. What would you give to get out of that place? If you were in hell today, what would you give? Think about what you would give to get out of pain, to get one finger out of pain one foot out of pain, one eye out of pain, any part, any member of your body out of pain, but the whole you in pain, the whole you in torment, the whole you crying for just a little relief as the rich man cried. Oh, he had had everything of the material things of life, 
everything. Sure, he didn't need God. He didn't feel any need of God. If he wanted anything, he bought it. He had the money to buy it. He didn't need to pray. He didn't feel any need of prayer. Now he is begging. He's not praying. He's begging. He wants something that any poor person can have, a drop of water. Any poor person can get a drop of water. Any poor person can afford a drop of water. But he's begging for the smallest of favors, a drop of water, just to cool his tongue. That should shake you up. You say, I can't believe in a place like that if you'll go to Calvary with me. If you'll look at the Son of God hanging on Calvary about 2,000 years ago, previous to that time, they'd plucked his beard out, they'd spit upon him, beat his face into a pulp. Oh, he looked so terrible. They crowned him with thorns. Look upon him, and you see that awful looking sight. You tell me you don't believe in hell. Why do you think he was hanging there between earth and heaven? Why do you think he died for you and me? Why do you think he left his home in heaven and came down here if there isn't a literal burning hell and the wicked shall be turned into hell and everybody that forgets God? Turn ye while you yet have time. Turn ye and say, Lord, here am I. I have failed you. I have sinned against you, but I'm coming home. And I thank God for Calvary and that Jesus died for me. You may think that there's things that you can't give up, that you can't give up your way of living, your way of life. You may feel like you have to drink that something that intoxicates you. You may think that you have to be on drugs and take trips on drugs. You may, have to th you may think you have to run around with the other man's wife or the other woman's husband. You may think it's being smart and that you're in the in crowd, but what would you give in exchange for your soul? What would you give? I'll tell you, you better give it all up. It'll become ashes. It may look beautiful today to you, but it'll be ashes on tomorrow and ashes for all eternity. Won't it be something for you? There you are with a handful of ashes at the end of the way. And we who have lived for God, we will swap all the ashes for beauty, all the trials and all the temptations, all the hardships and all the thorns. We'll trade them for beauty. Oh, hallelujah. We will have it made and we'll hear the Lord say, come my child, enter into the joy of the Lord for all eternity. And we'll reach out and we'll take that nail riven hand and we'll bow before the throne of God and we'll thank God for eternal life and we'll thank God that our soul will live on in the joys of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Isn't that something to think about? But you sold your soul to the devil for almost nothing like he saw of old that sold his birthright. Some of you today, you've sold your soul to the devil for almost nothing. Almost nothing. It doesn't amount to anything the sins that you're committing, what good are they doing you? What satisfaction do you get out of them? Oh, you may think you're happy for the moment, but then it's all gone. And then you awake and you hate yourself for doing the things you've done. You despise yourself. Some of you, you wrecked and ruined your life. You could have had so much joy and happiness even in this life for serving God but you've wrecked and ruined your life. Some of you young people, you've completely destroyed yourself. There isn't much left of you. Nobody has any faith in you that you can ever be anything, but Jesus is looking at you today and saying, come child, I'll make you new. Come child, I'll give you a new life. Come, I'll make you a new creation. Come, come to me, come. I came to buy back your soul. Uh, yes, man, it sold his soul to the devil. Adam and Eve sold their souls to the devil. 
Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to buy back everything that man sold out to the devil. I'm glad he came and bought my soul back. Aren't you glad he came and bought yours? Oh, hallelujah. Don't lose your soul. A child, if you lose your soul, you will have lost everything. You'll come to the end of life's journey, and there you'll be all alone in the dark, and the demons of hell will be there. They're hideous. They'll be there gathered around your bedside. You hear people talk about someone dying and screaming as they died, describing terrible things around them, terrible things that had come to get them. And the doctor says, oh, they're just delirious. Not so. This Bible teaches demons teaches the theory of demons. Those are demons that have come to usher that soul into hell, uh, to claim that soul that's damned forevermore. Think of some of the nightmares that you've had, and you were so glad to awake. I know, oh my God, oh my God, I'm still alive. Oh my God, it isn't true. And when you woke up, it was good to be alive, wasn't it? You were so glad to wake up. But listen, when you're in hell, you won't ever get out. It'll seem like a nightmare, but it'll last for all eternity. You better believe what God has said to you. You better accept this Bible. It's true. It's your road mount to heaven. Don't think that you're going to sin and get by the soul that sinneth. It shall die an eternal death. God has worn man down through the ages of calamity and judgment. Sodom and Gomorrah, those people were warned, but it didn't work. Lot's wife was warned, but it didn't work. She lost her soul. Just for one look, she lost her soul. She was on her way out. Some of you are backsliders today. You were once on your way to heaven. You once knew Jesus. You once had eternal life dwelling on the inside of you. Oh, I know some preachers preach once you're saved, you can't backslide, but that's another lie of the devil. That's the devil trying to deceive you. That's the devil for sure. And if you die in a backslidden condition, hell will be your destiny. Remember, I told you so. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm not here to compromise the Word of God. I didn't come for your favor. I came to do the will of God. I don't preach for the favor of men and women, boys and girls. I preach because I'm called of God to proclaim the everlasting gospel of deliverance and truth to the inhabitants that live on planet Earth. And I have to face every message I preach. And thank God I've never preached one yet, but what I can face it on Judgment Day and say, Lord, I preached it just as you gave it to me. Oh, praise you, the Lord. I didn't take anything out. I didn't add anything to. I gave them the whole word of the living God. It's time to come home. It's time to repent. It's time to escape the pits of hell. Jesus, when he was here on earth, he said, where the soul, where the worm dieth not, or the soul dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. That's the reason he was willing to suffer any kind of death, any kind of agony. That's the reason he gave his life for you and me, so that your soul wouldn't be damned in hell, so that my soul wouldn't be damned in hell. It's time for you to look toward Calvary if you are not already looking. Turn to Calvary and take a look before it's too late. Look and live. If you die with your back toward Calvary, hell will be your destiny. How sad for you to lose your soul and be eternally lost. It won't matter how many loved ones left behind will believe that you went to heaven. It won't keep you from going to hell. They love you so much it would be hard for them to believe that you actually went to hell. But we have to take what the Word of God tells us. We have to accept what this Bible says. That's the reason so many people are in trouble today. They haven't believed what God has said to them. But if you want your life delivered, if you want to be set free, if you want to, be, uh, to have a new life, accept what God has said. 
tenderly he's calling he's calling to you and he's saying come home come home don't you hear the voice of the lord crying out turn ye turn ye from sin turn ye before it's too late there will be a time that it will be too late you will cry but he won't hear your cries you will beg but he won't hear your request it'll be too late now is the time i want you to give your heart to god today i want you to let jesus in you that have joined us by television why don't you come to jesus there is a literal burning hell there is a flame in hell if you're not going to believe that statement in the Word of God, forget about the rest of the promises in the book. I believe that statement just like I believe that statement that there's an eternal heaven for those who serve the Lord. Yes, and now sinner, backslider, come to Jesus. The Lord is calling for you. Why don't you come? Why don't you come, put your hand against mine. If you're on alcohol, on drugs, you can be set free. Press your hand against mine on the television screen as a point of contact. Oh God, I bring the sinners to you, the backsliders. Set the alcoholics free, the drug addicts free. Yea, deliver them now in the name of Jesus. And say, oh God, save my soul. Forgive me of my sins. I am lost. I don't want to go to hell. Save my soul. I am sorry, Lord, and I will serve you. And now say, come on in, Jesus. Come on in. If you really mean it, he has come. You that are sick and afflicted, are you ready for a miracle? I'm still in the same book the book that teaches hell, the book that teaches heaven, teaches physical healing. You that are blind can have your sight. You that are crippled can be made to walk. <laughs> you can be healed of any sicknesses or diseases. Press your hand against mine on the television screen as a point of contact. And now, Lord, I bring the sick and afflicted to you. I bring the cancer victims, the heart victims, those that are diabetics, set them all free, Lord. Heal! 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 In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the mighty prophet of God, the healing virtue of Jesus is flowing. Don't you feel him now? Arise and be thou made whole. You that were crippled, stand to your feet and walk in Jesus' name. Call a friend, call a loved one after the telecast and say, I found Jesus today or I was healed today. And then write and tell me about it. I will rejoice with you. Well, friend, I hope you enjoyed that look back in time and you were blessed by that sermon from Reverend Angley. At this time, we have more coming up, but first I want to encourage you, friend, to stand by this Jesus ministry with your tithes and your love offerings. The theme of this ministry has always been and will continue to be win the lost at any cost. And when you partner with this Jesus ministry with your tithes and offerings, you'll be sent a letter each month. In the July letter, the theme is follow thou me. Friend, let the Lord bless you in a great way. He said he would open up heaven's windows upon your life to bless you in such abundance that you would not have room enough to contain it all. And it's through tithing and giving love offerings. You can donate through our website at earnestangely.org. And as we continue to win souls, the Lord will bless you, not only in heaven, but he'll bless you now, spiritually, physically, and financially. You can also send in your support by mail. We have a mailing address for the United States. And those of you watching in Canada, we also have a Canadian address that you can write to. And friend, I want to encourage you to read the Holy Ghost magazine. You can read it for free online 
at ernestangeley.org. And the July edition is Look to Jesus First. We also have wonderful testimonies that come in through mail, email, and social media. So if you're not on the mailing list, call in and we will send it to you free. And remember, friend, this magazine is now a bi-monthly edition. It started that way in the beginning, and that's the way we're doing it. And Reverend Angley will have more of his sermons in the future in these magazines to be a blessing to you. And remember, each month that you sponsor this Jesus ministry, you will also get a giant little book. And these are sermons by Reverend Angley in booklet form. And the giant little book for July is Mountains, Mountains, and More Mountains. So when you send in your support for July, request offer P370. And now, friend, we have a special segment for you. A reporter brought her mother, who was legally blind, to receive prayer. And this was from the year prior in Baltimore, Maryland. And then we will show you the crusade in 1979 of the woman giving her testimony of how God gave her sight. Watch and be blessed. Get ready to receive your sight and get ready for your heart to be recreated. And you're ready. You're a backslider and you've come home. You got any cigarettes on you? Not with me. Not with you. Well, you're going to throw them away when you get with them again, right? No more smoking. Say, oh God, oh God, I'm a backslider, I'm a backslider. But, I've home, but I've come home and I'm going to serve you, Lord, the rest of my life. I believe in the power of God, and I know, and I know that Jesus saves me now. And I know that Jesus Say, saves come me in, now. Jesus. Come in. Woo! Glory be to God. Amen. And I command never crave nicotine again. Get ready. In the name of Jesus, thou blind devils, let her go. Thou blind devils, come out. Recreate the eyes. Get ready to see. Get ready for it to all be over. In the name of the Lord, open your eyes and look into mine. Just look into mine for the moment. Yeah, I can see. You can see me. Yes, but I still have a little blur. You got a little blur in one yet. You were legally blind, yes. right? You got just a little blur over here. Let's get rid of the blur. Anybody that's blind back there, just believe God while this lady is getting her sight. She said she had just a little blur in this one. Open again. Look right into my eyes now. Yes. That's all right. Yes. There, she's got it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! Yes. Woo! Yes. Glory! <laughs> yes. Amen! Yes. Isn't the Lord gracious? Yes. The Lord is so good. The blind receive their sight. The deaf hear. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. And John said, that's the Christ. <laughs> Mommy got her sight. Isn't that wonderful? I have two lovely ladies standing here on the platform with me. And when I was in Baltimore last time, the one lady was legally blind, totally blind in one eye, had just a tiny bit of sight out of the other eye. Yes. Today, she has her sight. She received her sight in the last crusade here in Baltimore, Maryland. Her daughter, Charlene Griffith, 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 is a news reporter and has been for how many years? About five years. About five years. And you're here today to report for the Lord. Oh, absolutely. He's just so wonderful that he gave uh, my mother her sight back. And he's given us strength and all of our... When you, ca you came to interview me, yes. and the request was kind of a strange one. Can I bring... Will it ask him, can I bring my mother with me? <laughs> now, reporters don't usually request that, <laughs> to bring their mother. But mom being blind, mom wanted her sight, and you wanted mother to have her sight. My mother believed that if you ever came to Baltimore that she would receive her sight. She would receive her yes. sight. And so you believed well, if I, you got her to me, it might happen, huh? Or well, did you believe it would? Well, I wanted to look into this miracle business because of the You was, wanted to look into this yes, miracle I did. business. And I figured I would go right to the to the top and see what I, I could find out. And you granted me an interview. That sounds like a reporter, doesn't it? <laughs> 
She wanted to find out about this miracle business. Is it fact or fiction? And that was the headline of her story. My story wasn't was it? miracles, fact or fiction. Fact or fiction, yes. and you found it to be fact, didn't uh, you? Without a doubt. And you know, you, I remember so well. Here you came with your mom. I said, yes, you can bring her on the platform for her to receive her sight. I told you that in the in interview. Yes. And here you came with her, but you were unsaved. You well, needed Jesus. I was uh, a backslider. I was wasn't a backslider. You? Yeah. Yes. And she'd never been slain in the spirit. She uh -oh. was going to have a new experience. This reporter was going to learn a new something about God, more than one new thing. And you said the sinner's prayer. I reached out and just touched you. I didn't push you down. I don't I? even remember you touching me. You I just went. You don't even remember me touching you. <laughs> I just went. And the went. Spirit of the Lord came upon you. You fell in the Spirit. Yes. And while she was in the Spirit, I prayed for her mom, and her mom got her sight. And isn't that beautiful? She found Jesus, became a new creature in Christ Jesus. And then when she came to herself, <clears throat> there stood this precious mom, with her sight. Yeah. Greetings and give your name. Rosalie Ramage. And what town are you from? Uh, Fork, Maryland. Fork, Fork Maryland. Mm -hmm. yeah. How does it feel to be able to see? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. There is no, ex no way to explain it. It's just like if you fell in a well and it was covered up and suddenly you crawled out. Isn't that something? Just like falling in a well, darkness, darkness, and then crawled out. Yes. You know, your daughter Charlene wrote a great write-up and uh, on the miracle service, and then she dropped it like a bomb on the readers as an afterthought. Oh, yes, by the way, I took my mother. She was legally blind, and she <laughs> got her sight. I thought it was beautiful. Then I called to thank your daughter, your reporter daughter, yeah. Yeah for the article because it was indeed a good one. Thank you. And who answered the telephone but you? <laughs> she was so excited. And you know, she told me, she said, there were so many things I had planned to do when I got my sight. I didn't know what to do first. But I read, I read all of your books. I read the Bible through from uh, Genesis to Revelation. I uh, Listen to this, read the Bible through from Genesis to Revelation. Yeah. Read all of my books. Read everything good. And I've gone back through the Bible, going through it again, because that You're is going the most through precious the thing that you can even read. She's going through the Bible a second time now. It's the most precious thing. Oh, isn't it's, this wonderful? I want wonderful. to know everything. I, I know how those people felt when they were healed. I know how they felt. I know how the woman felt when she touched the garment of Christ and how she felt when she was suddenly healed. <laughs> I know all of that. I mean, you know that. You feel it. So uh, it's the most one I can't explain it. But I was blind, and I had been to um, a Wilmer Clinic that these people know about the Wilmer Clinic in Hopkins, and I was told I would never see again. Yet I see you as plain as day now. Oh, glory! Isn't this wonderful? Told she would never see again, but she said, I see you as plain as day. Yeah, and you're driving you. your car. I drive the car. She is driving her car. Yes. Isn't this something? Driving. Yes. Let the skeptics look. There she goes down the road. Right. They can say a blind woman's driving that car, or else they're going to have to say God did it. God gave her sight. Now, they can just make up their minds. It's either a blind woman driving her automobile down the street or it's a woman that's received her sight. Right. Well, we know which, don't we? <laughs> well, you are a delightful person to talk to, well, and I know the you. Lord's happy that he healed you. Well, he you must have had something testimony. for me to do. You, yeah, he, he must have something for me to do. He does, and you're doing do. part of it right now, aren't well, you? Thank you. You're I, being a great witness, and millions of people can tune in to see you yeah. and hear you, and there'll be so many. It's hard to tell how many blind will receive their sight right. during this telecast. Yes. Because they will decide as they watch and listen to you, or they can't see you, but they can hear your voice that if God did it for that lady, he'll do it yeah. for me. And it's hard to tell how many will receive their sight. Oh, that's they are listening to the that telecast.
The Lord is precious. I know yeah. you feel like a brand new you, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. I was just floating on air after I saw you. I've, I hear the kids talk about being on cloud nine. You're on cloud nine after that. On cloud you know. nine after that. It's not on the kids on cloud nine. Grandmother's on cloud nine. Yeah. Well, Charlene, you've written a lot of stories in your day, and from what you told me, you've met a lot of celebrities, and yes. you've written a lot about celebrities. But when you wrote about mom getting her miracle, that that's, must that's, have been the greatest time of your life. It was not only the greatest story I've ever written, it has received the most acknowledgement from most people, including celebrities. I've sent them to various uh, television. I write a theater column. I write and I've sent the columns to, uh, at their request, when they would hear about my mother's miracle, and they would say, are there really miracles? And I'd send them the story, and they believe too. So it's been, the, I think, the greatest achievement of my life, and I feel that God opened the door for that. I really do. That's beautiful. You know, I think one of the greatest gifts next to, uh, to salvation is sight. Oh, I to think To be so. able to see. Yes. And you could well agree on that, I believe, after being in darkness oh, yes, so yes. long, and then to suddenly come out into the light. Oh, yes, yes. And then to be on this platform, and suddenly you saw the preacher. Uh-huh, I did when you prayed for me. Yeah, I when I prayed for you, yeah. suddenly you saw me. Yes. Well, God did it. It was a miracle. Yes. God did it. Ernest Ainsley had nothing to do with it. Can't you tell I'm as excited as she is over it? I didn't do it. I didn't do it. It's I only am. an instant. It only takes an instant for yeah. God to touch you, and it's It just done. took an instant, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's what she's saying. It just took an instant for God to do it. Suddenly, it happened. Suddenly, she received her sight. Suddenly, her world changed. Suddenly, she came from a world of darkness to a world of light. That's the greatness of our God. And yes. you that are blind today, you can receive your yes. sight. You that are viewing the telecast yes. today, you can have your sight. And because God is real, and He loves those people just as much as He loved you. Yes. That mm -hmm. Sunday in Baltimore, yeah. Maryland, yeah. when He healed you and gave you your sight. Right. And I know the Lord was pleased with you when you grabbed up the Bible and started on your journey. Oh, yes. She had I thought had... of so many things. She said, I, th I had so many things I want to do. I didn't know what to do first. But the first thing, she had to get through that Bible. She had to read every word that God had said in that book. And then she wanted to read all of my books to see if she had missed anything. And I read your books, and I read, I kept reading the Bible, then I got to reading more and more and faster and faster. And As she said, I read faster than I had ever read. <laughs> and how did it. you feel that first time going down the road after you got your sight? Well, Under it was that? a little awkward because I had a little trouble keeping the I hadn't driven in so long, keeping the car off of the yellow uh, streak in the road. Yeah, a little trouble that yeah. you hadn't driven yeah. in so long. But, but she wanted to drive home after the crusade. She, she wanted to drive home, home from, from the, the crusade. crusade. Yes. Isn't that great? She wanted to drive home. She could, she could see that from well. the crusade. From the crusade. This is beautiful. Now remember this Charlene Griffith is a newspaper reporter. She had attended that service to check the miraculous part. Was it for real? Was it fact or fiction? Well, she took the fact home with her. <laughs> a That's seeing a mother, yes. a mother with her sight. Yes. And Charlene Griffith took the greatest gift of all, the miracle of salvation in her heart. Yes. Yes. Well, I understand from what I hear about you, you're being a wonderful witness for Jesus now I, and, and I for try. this ministry. I try every And telling so I many, get. many people about every what God chance. is doing through this ministry. It is a joy to have you back with us today. Thank you. Glad Thank you. you can it see is a pleasure. and enjoy the great yes. gift of sight. And Charlene, it's always good to hear from you. Oh, thank keep you. up the good work and keep telling others about what God is doing. I will. And my prayers are for you, and the Lord wants to use that miracle over and over because yes. there's so many waiting to be told that they too can have a miracle. I never could have witnessed as much uh, in any other way than I have since I had the miracle. I have I, witnessed in so many ways and to so many people, and even this, I mean, I could have never done this any other way. That's uh, right. Witness and for the God Lord. God marked you 
for a miracle and to be a greater witness for him. Oh, and thank so you. be it. Thank you. God be with both of you. God love you and keep you. Thank, thank you. Give them a great big God bless them. Oh, how marvelous. God is so good. This is the call to Calvary, come on. This is the call to Calvary, come on. This is the call of God, and God is calling you today, so come on. You that have sin of any kind in your heart, hidden sin, open sin, sin cannot get into heaven. Not one particle of sin can get into heaven. Raise your right hand. Let's get rid of all your sins. Raise that right hand. Come on. Put up that right hand. Put up that right hand and say, Oh, God, oh God. I have sinned against you. I am so sorry. I will serve you, Lord, the rest of my life. I believe in the blood of Jesus, and I believe that his blood washes away all of my sins, all of my sins, all of my sins. Say, come in, Jesus. Come in, Jesus. Come in, Jesus. Lift up that other hand and say, hallelujah, he has come. Hallelujah, he has come. Hallelujah, he has come. Hallelujah, he has come. Oh, friend, that was one mighty altar call indeed. So many souls just pouring out their heart to the Lord, and no doubt at that altar call, many lives were changed. Well, I pray this was a great blessing to you. And if this Jesus ministry has been a blessing in your life, in the life of your family and friends, please let us know about it. We'd love to hear your testimony. You can send your testimony by email to testimonies at ernestangely.org. And also like us on Facebook and become a subscriber to our YouTube channel at Ernest Angley Ministries because we will be posting this episode of the Ernest Angley Hour on our YouTube channel. In fact, we have so much content on our YouTube channel. It's wonderful. Different songs by our performers here. Also, our live stream services are shown on our YouTube channel, and you can be a part of that. You may not be able to attend service, but you can be a part of our services at Grace Cathedral through the live stream on YouTube. Friend, check out all of our social media pages. We are adding new content all of the time. And follow us on Instagram. It can be a great blessing to you to be spiritually fed and edified any time of the day or night. And friend, remember we have our camp meeting coming up in six weeks. Make plans to be with us. It can be a great blessing to you. And when you have the opportunity, like to invite you to be in our services. We have services each and every weekend. We always welcome visitors to worship the Lord with us. We have the Friday service at 7 p.m. Good music and singing, the Word of God being preached. And if you're in need of prayer, come and receive prayer and expect God to move for the need in your life. Also, Sunday, we have services at 10 a.m., and 7 p.m. More good music and singing in each service, the Word of God going forth. Oh, you will be greatly blessed. Well, friend, I hope you were blessed today. We look forward to seeing you next week on the Ernest Angley Hour. And always remember, no one has ever loved you like Jesus loves you. No one has ever cared for you like Jesus cares for you. You are special to God. This program is paid for by the Ernest Angley Outreach Partners.